Amen. Mark 16. Reading from verses 15. Yakutuo Namie Alleluia Yakutuo Namie Alleluia I read from verse 15 to 20. And he said unto them, Go ye into, into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse 17, and these signs, someone said these signs. I want to hear you louder. These signs. These signs shall follow them that believed. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Verse 19, so then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working. Someone said the Lord. The Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs. Follow me. Follow them. And the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Which signs? The sign that he spoke about in verse 17. These signs shall follow them that believed. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I have titled my message, What is Following You? Ask the person next to you, What is Following You? Now, you will read at the latter part of this passage that after he spoke about these signs right on the spot he was raptured it means these are the final instructions to the believer now take note the apostles then who were standing before him were not ordained ministers they were unlearned. They have not been to Bible school. So here, the context of this passage is not Bible school, ordained pastors, clerical color. These are pure believers. And these are the signs that shall follow them that just believe. So even as I speak right now, you are included. You are included because you are also a believer. And then he categorically stated four major points there. That is where my emphasis is going to be shortly this morning. Sign number one, he spoke about he spoke about casting out of devils Sign number two, 
They shall speak with new tongues. Sign number three. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Sign number four. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, watch this. He was raptured into heaven and sat by the right hand of the Father, watching that these signs that he spake unto them is following them. To ensure that the things that he spake unto them, they were following them in detail. Oh, are you here? You know, um, I was sharing in the first service that when we are leaving home, maybe a week before we leave home, maybe are traveling abroad, you see my wife talking to the people, do this, do that, talking to the children, you must do this, talking to the watchman, do that, houseboy, and all that, and on and on and on. And when we are about to leave for the airport, and they are standing by the car, then you roll down the glass and lay some few emphasis. Now, those few emphasis are the main thing. So, so apart from the many things that he has been speaking from since Monday, he spoke, she will speak on Monday, she will speak on Tuesday, she will speak like, do the, we, we haven't even traveled, she's giving instructions. That is the same way Jesus was speaking to the apostles every day. He will say this to them. He will say that many, many things. But when he was about to rapture, then he lay emphasis on the main thing. And guess what? Right before his presence, he was raptured. Then they went about performing the signs that Jesus spoke to them before he left. And, the, and, and you know, he wants to make sure that That they receive the believer's authority. That as you are walking as a believer, you are not walking just for walking sake, but you are walking with authority. Yeah. Oh, am I talking to some people? Oh. It's called the believer's authority. You just, you just don't walk to church, walk out of church, walk to church, walk out of church, like it's all about church coming and going. No. Are you a believer? Did you shamelessly receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? These signs are unto you for you automatically. And also, it, 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 it didn't want them to be dependent on people. No, you don't depend on people. What the things I've spoken to you they are self-sustained. You will survive the many things. You will survive the enemy. You outwit the devil. You, you, you will perform miracles. You will be accepted. It's like among the many that I've spoken, these few ones will keep you going. He didn't want them to just like you have believed in Jesus and that is all. It means what you should do is beyond just salvation. It also means that there's, there are benefits of being committing yourself to Christ. It also means that he's giving you divine exemption from certain attacks. Are you here? It also means that he's giving the believer weapons. You carry weapons. So you can fight and win your battles. Am I speaking here? Now, let me look at the signs. In my name, they shall cast out devil. Any time you hear the word casting out of devils. One of the things that comes to your mind is that these are for pastors who will line up people and they are commanding devils to come. But it's beyond that. 
Because the work of the devil is everywhere. The activities of the devil is beyond church. There are devils in our workplaces. Demonic activities are in our offices. We have environments in which people are practicing witchcraft. These are areas that you see the practices of the devil. And you as a believer, you don't need to call your pastor to your office. Yeah, you, you, you don't need to invite me to your office and say that, Pastor, I sense that demons are in this office. Can you come and deal with them for me? I will not come. I may not come. Because even as, as you are just a believer, power has been transferred unto you. And Jesus has, has, has ascended into heaven and guess where he's sitting? At the right hand of the Father to ensure that that which he spake unto you will come to pass. It means you carry power. Oh, am I here? It means you can pour oil in your office and cancel demonic activities. And guess what? The Lord will honor it. Look, you have no idea how devils, devilish activities, devilish spirits have entered into our marriages. Separating marriages. The ones that we used to admire have suddenly become caricature to us. The fellowship and the union of the two of us has gone down. It's an activity. Sometimes we tend to blame the man or the woman. But listen to me. It is not the man or the woman. It's the devil. The very beautiful office that you have. They are evils. They are people practicing evil. They are, they are carrying devilish spirits. They are jealous of your promotion. Let me even add this. They wish you dead. So that they will take over your office. So that promotion that they are now, he or she is jealous of the promotion. You are, you are in an office and people are going up and down. They are annoyed when the container arrives from Tema Harbor and you are removing things from, from, from the container into your shop. What is going on here? You are moving things. When you are putting up real estates and the estates are emerging and even before you finish, it has been bought. Thousands of dollars and some are believing God for one dollar. So obviously, you are not celebrated. Let me tell you something. Sometimes, outsiders unbelievers celebrate and rejoice among themselves even more than we Christians. Oh yeah. The house of God is a house of jealousy and enviness. People can't even walk from, from their seat to, to the front because the moment she, she steps out to give offering, then one person will tap the other, another person will either unlock or not. This one to have become a problem. It's a topic that I come in front and I'm dancing and I'm dancing. So my dancing too, you have become jealous of it. What is wrong with you? So you, you can't celebrate me for a while. Oh, am I preaching here? So Jesus told them, there will be devils everywhere. Cast them out. You don't need a Bible school to cast the devil out. Because authority has been transferred. This my brother was the one preaching this way. He said, transfired. 
So it's called the believer's authority. And my title is, what is following you? So, so look, as a Christian, once you give your life to Christ and accept Jesus as your Lord and personal fear, your grandmother demons can't follow you again. The family existing curses has stopped following you. Look, let me tell you something. And believe me, believe me. There are people who say that, well, 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 pastor, I, I don't believe in all these things. Really? You don't believe in all? A, a couple was telling me the other day and said that they have their, their nice uncle B that they love. He's hardworking. He's a nice person married with four kids of that university. The, boy, the man will come do everything. I own your things. Do everything. Yeah, he's a nice person. Just say, he just say, he's down. You see the way our brother Ter is. It will be your home, work, do this, like everything. And then he, he, they gave him a lift and he dropped at La Paz. So you know that La Paz, there are lanes. One of the lanes, one, two, three, four lanes. Then there's this uh, cemented, then there are two lanes. And, he, and they have dropped and he was walking on the pavement after the other two lanes. Then a car came from the other lane, crossed all the lanes, jumped over the cement pavement, crossed the two lanes, and knocked him. Broke his leg and died instantly at La Paz Road. I mean, tell me that this is God. This is devil. You don't believe in all these things. Pastor, I will preach it, but I don't believe in all these things. With the trial. And the family is in a state of shock that nice person like this can be killed. You think that good people cannot be harmed? Good people can be killed. Have you seen good people have died before? Good people have died. When we have having midnight cry on Friday, uh, Ojo was saying something. He said, all these young people are dying all over. He's just analyzing young people that are dying all over. He said, now make sure more heaven. He doesn't need them. These are people that the devil is killing all over the place. God, he doesn't need them in heaven. He was saying it on Friday. God, God, God won't be heading. I forbid you dying before your time. And so he was saying that all these evil activities, you cast them out. You have a house help who is who who or to me so how much no or sane or daring. You sense that this house help has been sent to your home to bring tension. To bring quarrel. Look. Look for the oil. Yourself. Lay hands on this girl. And cast out that devil. You have no idea. The authority you carry. But these signs. Shall follow them. That believe. See, what you need is just a believer. You see, when you when when you go to your when you go to your office and you see feathers and egg and talisman tied to your seat, laugh. Oh, really? Is that all you can do? Take your anointing oil and tell I pour the oil and I sanctify all these things and sit on your chair. That's called believer's authority. Now when we have a Where's the phone? Keto. Who are you? Okoku Masi. Pastor Mike. Moai. Oko Switzerland. Reverend Steve. Moai. Or you were so shining color. Reverend Salou Waifa. Mr. Betuka Mijimeli. So what do you do? What do you do? People are not there. You are a believer and a sign is following you that you shall cast the devils and the Lord shall enforce it. So my 
sister, put, look, put your authority. See, let me tell you something. The progress of your life doesn't make people laugh. Yeah, the progress of your life, the beauty on your face, the way you have put on, driving, doesn't make people laugh. Eh, muji meni, muji weni. Even mothers are jealous of their daughters. Some mothers. Sometimes a wife can progress and the husband is jealous. I promote you. I ask my car for Hey, sir, who can approach you? Who conference? About when we close, one protocol lady said, Pastor, I have five year multiple. I'm going to the U.S. Uh, for a conference and I'm just informing you. Just like that. And sometimes they can't even announce it. We, 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 Obeko, Obeko Airport, Boko, Loko. On crowd, Okodu, yeah, Okodu, yeah, no, I'm afraid, ah, ma, more conference, I'll bring you one thing. Mission Kuala Mami. Why? She's afraid. But I've come this morning to tell you, you don't have to be afraid. Authority and power is with the believer. Don't downplay it. When you see a, a woman give birth to a child and the child's leg is crooked, some of this is devilish. They enter the womb and break the child's leg. I'm telling you, when I closed, a certain one of the well, one of the lady came to me and said, "Daddy, uh, my son closed from school, coming out of coming out of the bus, and I don't know what happened. A car was coming. They are stopping this car. It won't stop. Came close to the bus. It, it was on the lelo." came close to the bus and smashed my son's hand and cut and, and smashed it. So I sat now, my son's hand is gone. See, the right hand. Remember the lady. This is a devilish attitude. You have no idea the works of the, when we come and we are sitting here quietly at that room. Share. And you may see who Things are happening in the spirit. But guess what? You have authority. When you discern it, you cast it out. Don't anytime they say, and they shall cast out. Don't be thinking about Reverend Sylvain Stalinist and Pastor Mike and Co. People have lined up and we are laying hands and people are manifesting. That's just 10%. The other 90% are everywhere homes, offices, even your compound house. One woman is in that third house. Have taken over the entire community. The queen of the coast. Was Jehovah. Cast that thing out. It will surprise you. As smallish as you are. When you command it. Heaven will honor it. It's called. The believer's authority. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. Put on the screen. I'll read something to you. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. And what is the kingdom of God? Is joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. So, and, and what happens before the kingdom of God comes to it? It is when devils are cast out. So we can experience God and the joy of fellowship. But if you're not very careful, your business will spoil, your wife's business will spoil, you'll be hungry, you are in church, but you are hungry. You have lost your job. You have lost your car. Your wife to have lost her job. She has lost her car. You can't pay rent, but you are in church. What are you doing? Cast the devil out. I've come to inform you. It's not just enough going out and coming to church and every Sunday you are here. 
Only you are here in your tie. And your boo-boo. Cut your nice car. Come and sit. Enjoy worship. But there's a devil we have to cast. And guess what? Don't be afraid. Because Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Ensuring. Put that scripture there. That this sign should follow you. I see authority transferred to you. When, whenever you are opening your container, freely soak the container in the blood of Jesus. Seal the shop. They can't see it through. And I see power coming to you. Sign number two. I might say something to you. Number two sign that he left him. He said, they shall speak with new tongues. First Corinthians 14, verse 1 to 5. First Corinthians 14, this tongue speaking is some way to some people. Yes, speaking in tongues is a very strange thing to you. You see it as some funny way of being a Christian. Yes, that's a funny way. Okay. You're okay, pa. Verse 1. Let's begin from verse 1. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. But rather that ye be prophesied. For, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Habit. In the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. Kafi, no man understand me. But it doesn't bother me. But in the realms of the spirit, number one, I speak unto God and I'm speaking mysteries. What's the meaning of mysteries, Keto? A lot of wonderful things. Google mysteries and start telling me what, what mysteries are. Hidden truth. Strange things. You speak. Telling, look. When you speak in tongues. Your mother. And your father. And your pastor. And your wife. They don't understand it. They are not supposed to understand it. But they are speaking. You see the beautiful part of it is that. I'm talking to God. I'm talking to God. So when I speak, Rabba Kasantamri, I'm not bothered about you. I'm not worried about you. In fact, if you take away my gentleness, I don't care. I'm talking to my God. In fact, it's a direct communication between me and God. Why am I talking to God? Because there are strange things around me that I don't understand. I have put one plus one. It should be two. But one plus one, I had a ten. Some calculation is not fitting. I have done all that I should do. But I'm not seeing the results. I have planted, but I don't see the fruit. No knowing some witches. Strangely, I devouring my blessing. So now, I don't know exactly where they are coming from. Whether my mother's side or my father's side or from my sister. Sometimes your own sister is practicing witchcraft. Your auntie, she's a witch. Who oh, shaman? You have no idea who people are. She's a witch. So since you don't know what is going on, let me get up at dawn. I'm talking to God. What is happening? I don't know what's going on. I'm falling sick. Things are going bad. I cannot be a man of God. I cannot be a Christian. And I'm not stealing for. So when you, when you, 
pray to God. You empower God to take action for you. I was given an analogy in the first service that um, I was watching a movie. In a movie, in a movie, there is this Taliban who are strapping bombs to individuals. So what they are saying is that if you should die right now, you will go to God. Once you blast and you die, you are with God. And be and kill people. And being with God means a blessing. So how many people want to be with God in peace? The people have killed you. Ready to strap the bomb. And go and sit in a restaurant. Or, or a, a, a meeting somewhere. And then open the bomb up. Blast himself and kill everybody. And they have several of them in the room. And people have killed. Ready, ready. I don't know what kind of madness is that. You have wife and children. You strap yourself with a bomb. Go and sit in the restaurant. Open it up and there is devilish. It's a devilish spirit. Somebody corrected my English. It's devilish spirit. So, the, the Americans got hint of the fact that these are people who are blasting certain areas. So, they went into a cubicle with a small machine and they raised, they raised they lit up a drone and the drone goes about 35,000 feet high in the sky and it's carrying a bomb and they have a handle and they were just controlled like, you know, they are piloting the drone from America and the drone is around like some Taliban areas from Afghanistan somewhere and they are watching the movement on the drone on the screen moving and then there's a screen that will beam from the drone to the spot where and examine all because they have to be sure and then whilst they were sure of the fact that those bombs that are supposed to be striping people are all ready, then they will, ask, they will ask their commander, we are ready. Shall we go? Then the commander said, let it go. Let's go on. Then they will, just a button, pop. Right down from the U.S. in the small cubicle, they will press the button. And the drone carrying the bomb will release it from 35,000 feet high in the sky. The people are normal, drinking, eating, preparing to go and blast another community. For realize, bam! On our way. That's how tongue speaking is. It doesn't, that's how it is. It doesn't miss. So, so issues and, and problems and satanic, demonic activities that you can't comprehend. Now your father can't relate to you. Things are not going well. You don't know what is happening. And then when you speak to God, he sent the drone up. So if they have ganged to fight you before they are conversing, suddenly, bam! Because nobody understood. The devil didn't understand the tongues. He didn't understand it. Before he realized, it has scat. That is why in... First Corinthians 14 14, put it out there. First Corinthians 14 14. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14. If I pray, if I pray in an own tongue, my spirit prayed, but my understanding is unfruitful. Now read, now let's go to 14 18. 14 18, quickly. I thank my God that I speak with tongues more than all of you. The first part say, I wish that all of you should pray in tongues. Because that is your that is your drone. That is your drone. Because one is in the air. They don't know. They, they don't know what's going on. They are just sapping people, getting ready to go and fire and cause harm. But the drone has spotted them, and your tongue speaking Rabba Kasatranda de Dakaba. No, speak some tongue. Let me. Bados ita kabran. Vresko prake sad. Mandagabu saha. Rekata zi. You marry. Hello, Pen, how are you? And why you want? Maybe I'm in Pemmy one same sign. I am in the Mediate. That is why you are not going forward. Because a radi, Midawasi, Missirawo, Utim Quemo, Wayakasi, 
What's that? What is this? Witchcraft activity are happening all around you. Your sons are going wayward. Yesterday I was listening to I was listening to a, a, a separate summit and Reverend Jesus was talking about pastors children. When we are raising sons and daughters in the church, our own are going wayward. Why? Because we don't lay hands on them. You said, yeah. yeah. So you, you, you are here, you are so gentle, you, are, you feel that your, your, your son should do well. But Satan can collect your son. Because he's so intelligent, when he goes to school, the teacher, find, the teacher himself is a wizard. When you go to When you go to certain hospital, some of the nurses are witches. They kill their people before they die. And they kill the babies and suck their blood. They are, they are agendas in the hospital. I won't mention that hospital. They are agents of the devil. So when you put your, 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 your wife in the world, don't go to sleep. Kabara, because a nurse over there can kill the woman. You pray in tongues all night so that the drone will be lifted. Before they gather to strangle your wife, if they will hear, pam. So the Bible said, I wish that all of you will speak in tongues. It's in verse 5. Now, go and read message translation and NLT of the whole of St. Corinthians 14 to understand the speaking tongue. It's your power. So Jesus said, speak in new tongues. And when you have uncertainty, enter into tongue speaking. When, when we were in GES, Kato, a woman came to give testimony on the Fridays. And she said, she said, stood, she said the son, the small son was um, sick. And the way the boy was sick, everything shows that he would die. Sick. Then, you know, those days, Mobitel, nobody can afford Mobitel. And she was in an uncompleted, ha uncompleted house, very poor. The husband has left her. But tongues have left her. So she prayed in tongues and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And prayed. The more she prays, the more sick the boy is. The more she was praying, the more sick the boy was. And you see the woman, the judge was praying and sweating and praying and was sweating and was, laying, and was laying hands on the child. And she was praying and sweating and nothing changed it. Then when she finished praying, then she heard the voice, go outside. You will find a tree. Pluck the leaves of the tree. Come and boil it and give it to the child. Then she went outside and saw the tree. Pluck the leaves came back, boiled it, and gave to the child. When, he, when she gave to the child, instantly the boy got up. So in the morning, she went to pick this amazing tree, the leaves of the amazing tree. When she got there, the tree was not there. There was no tree. It's called divine intervention. When she printed, bam, the Lord planted the tree. Plugged it, boiled it, gave it to the boy. When she went back to pluck more leaves and store, there was, and she, she, was, she was giving testimony at GES. It was Ghana Evangelist Society by Lokagbozo. We were there, myself, we were there. To plug and store. She leaves it to me, sir, help them cut it. No matter who. I want to say you 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 dry. What's this? How do you say? Mahata. Let me keep it baby. When she got the cafe, there's no tree. It's called divine intervention. It's called divine exemption. That is the authority of the believer. Only four. But she had tongues. This this morning I told Pastor Elisha, all those of you who don't pray in tongues, go to go to reception 
and pray in tongues just this morning. When she closed, when they closed, she went there. A lot of people went there and were praying in tongues. They just sang kwasa seminar. You need tongues. Stop criticizing tongue speaking. We need it. Oh, am I here? Sign number three. Nami koko kobeni. Onyami kakra krabeni. Onyami ko. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. Now, this scripture, you have to watch it carefully because you can easily misinterpret this because if you pray in tongues all day and you see a cobra lying in the bush and you pick it up, it will bite you. Look at it carefully. If you pray in tongues for six hours and you take a cup of glass water and pour DDT in it, if you do it, you will die. So don't look at the scripture literally. It's trying to tell us something. It means when you enter into an environment where, you are, where there's a trap for you, you receive divine exemption. Divine escape. Do you know how many people have tried to poison you and you are still alive? Do you know how many people have poisoned you in your food? Do you know how many people have set trap for you? Oh, 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 this is, a, this is a cook for you. What well, poison? No. But you are a believer. You drank it innocently, but you lived. Oh, can I have some cup of coffee? Yeah, poison coffee need to be a baguni. Onyamin ejo. It's called divine. Look, look. They poison your coffee. That white man. No. We are black lady. Then I will question why your boss was her. And I would do so as a on a brew new, and we be bini, and our oshawasi, and our brown coffee. Now, oh no, or pay with you, poison you. When you come the next day, you are still working. The next two days, you are still working. After one month, 50 years, you are still working. What is wrong with this lady? It's called divine exemption. Oh, am I? There are wives who have poisoned their husband's food. Wives who are angry, and the mother said, Kill the man. But the husband came back innocently and ate the food, and she was still alive, or he's still alive. It won't work. That's what the scripture means divine exemption, divine escape. You didn't know. But to not harm you. So, in other words, he's trying to tell the disciples that when you enter into all these dangers, I will take you out. In Acts 28, Acts 28, the Bible said the ship was wrecked. And, and Paul and a few of his people climbed the mountain and entered to a city called Melita. And, and the people, because the weather was cold, they lit up some fire because if they, are, they don't know anybody there, they can't enter into any house. They don't know where they are from. So they lit, they lit this fire and they stood to keep them warm because they can die out of cold because the place was cold. And then the fire was going down. I don't know what happened to Paul. Paul went to gather more additional sticks so they'll have more fire. And Paul came and added more fire to the ongoing fire. When he added more fire to the ongoing fire, then the venom of viper came out of the fire. The heat was intense and the venom of viper came out of the fire, flung on the hands of Paul and bit his hand. It's the most poisonous snake in the entire world. 
Because you write down when it beats you, you will swell, you will foam, you will fall down, and you will die instantly. So when it flung the hands of Paul, because he didn't know. You have no idea. He just went and picked these sticks from the bush and was just lit him on fire. He doesn't know. No, and, and one pastor, I was saying in the first service, one pastor was saying that uh, when he was guarding the city, then he added a, a serpent to us. I said, I beg to differ from that thing. He didn't bring, he didn't bring anything. The snake was in the, under the fire a long time ago. But when the fire became intense, what has intensified the fire? What tongues has come up like that? Pa, it came out. And saw Paul, who was intensified the fire, and flung this and then beat him. The, 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 the village people watched him to fall down, foam, and die. When he didn't die, he didn't fall, they said, No, they changed their mind, said, He is a God. It can only be a God that can survive this snake. It's called divine exemption. He didn't know. That's how it is. They will plan to kill you. You have no knowledge, your heart is free. You can have a staff, a staff member that you have employed and is jealous of the progress of the company. And they want to kill you. You will never die. I say you will never die. Because it's called the believer's authority. And because Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand of his father, watching over you. Oh, am I preaching here or... And, I, and I'm asking you, what is following you? Your, your mother's curse or the curses from your hometown, they will not follow you. That which I've been given to, that's what we are dealing with. But a fresh one can never follow you. What can follow is what I'm telling you. Divine authority and power. The last one. You will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You will lay hands on the sick so funny. I was sharing with the first service that we were preaching a salam down. Did you, did you hear the testimony? We were preaching and a salam down and I was interpreting Pastor Steve in three. He would preach and I would interpret. He would preach and interpret and a madman was walking by where we were preaching and people didn't gather much. Some of them would open their window and be listening to us and Pastor Steve was preaching and I was interpreting the message in three. I didn't know how I did it, but I did it anyway. Because me, where I come from, no, it, doesn't, it doesn't go near three at all. I come from the Kramate somewhere. But I could speak three because I was born in a crowd. So I learned to speak three from our neighbors. So I was interpreting, then the guy stood, and then Reverend Steve said, if you want to give your life to Christ, pray this prayer after me, even though you are still in bed or you are in the room, pray this. And then he started narrating the sinner's prayer. And the madman was narrating, was saying the sinner's prayer with us. He was saying the sinner's prayer. And he said it so nicely. And then he stood. His hair was, in, was like dread rasta. This is an old mad person that everybody knows in Aslamda. His trousers is torn. When he's walking, you can see everything showing. The trousers is old. Himself is dirty, very wretched. And then, Reverend Steve looked at me. Like we are just believers. We, are, we have just been born again. And we just believe that believers, you know, the way we're zealous and we, we, are, we are lanky and we have gone to buy false trousers, false shirt, and false tie, and false socks, and false shoe. And we have come up, we are preaching. The zeal of consumers, we are preaching. No ordination, nothing. We haven't even started the church, Paul. It's just that we have, we have been born again. We go to GES and then we just want to exercise our faith. Then, for us, if lay hands on a mad person, when I saw that no harm came to him, I also lay hands. That is the preacher. He so took the lead. And then, and then the guy knelt down. And then Reverend Steve put his hand on his shoulder, also put one on the And then we, we were just praying, 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 praying. And we prayed that the madness should live and all that. And then the guy was like, wow. And then people started gathering. People started gathering. And then it's like, they started looking at himself. You could see that he has come to himself. 
he has recovered from the madness. Then we, then we ask him, what is your name? Then he mentions something maybe I can't remember today. That's about 40, 45 years ago. And then, he said, are you okay? He said, yes. Then we, we are like asking questions and he was answering. And then, and then, then Steve said, just shave him. Then we asked, has anybody got scissors? And another man said, yes, I have the scissors. Then he brought it. Then we started cutting. He said, right there, I ran about the slam now. And then somebody brought trousers. Somebody brought shirt. Somebody brought him shorts. People brought him to it. And we bathed him right at the place. They put sponge on him, bathed him. Then he wore the shirts. He has recovered. <laughs> Guess what? The next day, he was at the fellowship. And nobody could sit near him. They sat far away from him. Per chance. <laughs> Nobody sat by him. They sat far away from him. The fellowship of Salam. And on and on. I don't know about him today. But at that point, he recovered. So I'm telling you, lay hands on your sick boy, he will recover. Lay hands on anything that simile. One time, my brother was telling me that his son was in a very rough state and as if some demon wanted to possess him. One of my sons was telling me. And then he picked up the anointing oil and sprinkled it on the boy and cast the spirit out. And the boy recovered. That's how it is. That's how it is. You have that power, you have that authority to put into practice strange signs. And guess what? It will follow you. I think we have to reduce the calls to pastors. These are the signs that shall follow because you are a believer. That is why many people are not being deceived because they are looking for signs strangely from but you don't need any sign from any prophet. The sign is with you. It's with you because you're a believer. We as pastors, we have gone the extra mile to be ordained so that we can deal with official things. Dedicate your building. Do this, officiate marriage centers. But there are certain basic ones you can do it. Oh, am I here? And when you need certain help, don't run far. Because once you put into practice a divine authority to exercise power, the sign will follow you. So what have I said? I said, cast out some devils around you. Speak with new tongues. When we close this afternoon, Pastor Elisha will go to the reception. If you can't pray in tongues, enter there. And I give you five minutes, you pray in tongues. Because you need it. Some drones has to follow certain areas. Lay your hands on the sick and they shall recover. These are the signs that shall follow you. Why? Because you are a believer. God bless you all of you. Titi Bremo.